I can do this to it. I can do this. Say, go, mama, go, mama, go, go, mama, go, mama, go. What's up everybody? Thanks for tumbling in today. This video is going to be a full garden tour of everything that we have going on during this month of August and kind of the weird time before fall really kicks in. For those of you who don't know me yet, my name is Taylor and my husband is Rocky and we are slow developing this small scale homestead here in Northern Tennessee. The garden is really where we started with this whole journey, this whole experience. And it's a place that we're super excited and pumped to share with you and for you to see what we have going on. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and head outside. So welcome to the market garden. This was the first section that we really started developing. Just, we thought it was the best part of our land to really get started with. It did still re require us to terrace out the spaces for the beds. Um, these first three beds are four by eight and the C outline is really the part that's dug into the hill. And then we had a board going across this side. They're filled all the way with compost, a mixture of blackjack and premium screened is what we got from our local compost company. And in this first bed, we have bush beans. This is a overgrown mammoth dill that really needs to be collected for seed. <laughs> I'm letting it just sit here. But the rest of the bed is provider bush bean and it should be ready before the first frost, which is exciting, but it'll give us a, a good amount of harvest to preserve. This over here hiding in the corner is ginger. It's been going all summer and we're probably gonna let it go until the first frost as well. Hopefully we can ha harvest a good amount of that. And on this first trellis is Matt's wild cherries and wild is a really good adjective for this plant. At the bottom, you can see we have one, two, three, four, five plants here. But they produce an insane amount of suckers. Really when this started getting to about halfway up the trellis, I let some of the suckers go at the bottom to essentially start another round of tomatoes, of these, of these cherry tomatoes. So it's filled in the empty space where we had pruned from the bottom. It is in desperate need of a good prune, but it's given us a lot of really good cherry tomatoes this season. And I think it's got a good amount of life left in it. And then in this whole second bed on this trellis is a mixture of garden peach tomatoes and Japanese black trifile on that side. But for a bigger variety like this, these the, on this first trellis, they're cherry tomatoes, so they're a smaller plant. On this trellis, these bigger tomatoes are really starting to weigh. Oh, hello, Zara Ren. How you doing, babe? Good. Hi, pretty girl. These larger type of tomatoes have really started to weigh down this original trellis that we chose. And this really explains why we've upgraded to the cattle panel just with the larger gauge wire because it, it can't hold up some of the plants once, once they get this big. This is some small gauge chicken wire or something like that, but it just, it doesn't do the job. And our plan is to replace this eventually. Should we go up that side or this side? Uh, yeah, that's okay. <clears throat> so next in this bed, we have our eggplants. These are a Pomodoro dark eggplant. And they've actually produced quite a bit for us this season. They look a little bit tragic at this point with the flea beetles having really gotten to them. And this is a little bit of nutrient deficiency. They're probably ready for fertilizer or fertilizing. But I think at this point, we're almost ready to take these out. 
and turn it over into something else. We've, like I said, gotten a good amount from them. And I don't think the flea beetles eating the leaves up has really affected that overall production. Next, we have this really expansive ground cherry plant. This has been another one of our favorites this season. I felt like it really grew really quickly. It covered a lot of space and it's given us a lot of fruit. We've been really excited unwrapping them and have plans to turn them into a marmalade, which will be hopefully really delicious. We have dahlias thrown in, a few other flowers in there that aren't that aren't up right now, but just to get a mixture of color and to get all of our pollinators in with our veggies and everything has been really important. And we, we have loved the dahlias. They always have a lot of bees on them, so they're really fun to watch. This big plant back here is a cranberry hibiscus. It's actually a relative of like okra and stuff like that. It grows really well in the same climate. And eventually it would produce flowers, um, but really it's super gorgeous and just is a good contrast of color. With all the green, it's, it's really beautiful. So in this next bed is one of the crops that I was talking about us trying to fit in right before the end of summer in our first frost. These are an acorn squash, a winter squash. And we chose this variety because they're a really quick grow. They're under 90 days. And when I planted them, we had about that much time left in the season. So hopefully we get at least a few from them. And I have a few more spots that I might plant out a few more seeds just to see what we can get before the end of the season. Then on this trellis, we have our second round of pole beans started. There's a blend of green and yellow pole beans. They're a really quick grow, so we should get a decent amount of harvest before our last frost, or before our first frost. And they're great for storing in the freezer, they're great for eating fresh, and we love them. So we're getting a second round. This here, I'm, so, I'm sure some people might mention, this is a blackberry bush. I didn't put this blackberry bush here, but it, you're gonna see a lot in the garden. I really, I really like volunteer plants. <laughs> I have a hard time taking them out if they have the will to live there. So I've pruned it back a few times, but it, it, it does come back pretty aggressively. If anybody has ideas on how to handle this kind of situation in the garden, I'm sure a lot of people would say just rip it out, but I kind of like it being in there. I don't know, if you have ideas, drop ideas below. And then behind here, we have little baby elderberry bush that we put in last year. So it's just getting started. We're getting a flush of fruit right now that I know will, will grow as the seasons go. So that's exciting. And then in this, on this trellis, this last bed is a little bit bigger than the first three, but this has been one of our favorite crops this season. If not, I mean, for eating, it's really good for eating. It's just absolutely hilarious to grow and to watch grow because they grow so fast and take up so much room. If you have room to grow it, you should. It's just really fun. The ones that we have on here right now, I'm growing out to more of the butternut squash stage. They'll store really well. Oh, there's a lizard. Oh, he got a bug. I just watched it. Um, once they get to the butternut squash stage, they will store really well and our pigs will eat them. So we'll have a lot of options for that crop at that point. But anyways, a really exciting plant to grow and fun if you can, but it's definitely showing signs of needing to be turned over for the fall. Again, we're letting these finish out and then we'll put something else here. This spot is where our summer corn was we actually went ahead and removed this and we had a post about this just not going very well it really was an experiment this was the first time we'd grown sweet corn and really we were seeing how close we could plant them and still get a pretty good result we know that we need more room than what we gave them this time 
and I think we're going to be ready to be able to make adjustments for next summer. So it's just one of those things that you, you learn as you go and learn from the experience of it. But it was so fun to grow. And I think it was one of my favorite things. Even though we didn't get that much result from it, it was still really enjoyable to grow and I would highly recommend anyone trying it. So this next section is our sweet bell peppers. We have, oh, what is this one called? This one's just a gold standard. We got these starters from a local shop and they've done okay. We've gotten a few from them. And then we also have, it's called it like a gypsy sweet snacking pepper in here. It's these, those ones. And they've done okay. I think they do need another round of fertilizer, but they're, I mean, they're really coming to life now that it's a little bit warmer. Hopefully we get a few more harvests of those before the end of summer as well, because those are one of our favorites. We eat those a lot. Okay, I'm leaving it, it's fine. And this one here is another one of our favorites. It's actually going to seed right now, but this is holy basil. And it puts off these really beautiful little purple flowers when they're dried up. They start going brown. These are all the seeds. It replants itself heartily, so I'm sure next season we will have <laughs> lots of these popping up, which will be great. But it's great for tea. We've been drinking so much of this tea, but it's delicious and it smells <laughs> and it smells like bubble gum. The pollinators have really loved it too, so it's nice to have around. And then on this last trellis. <laughs> It's a little lucky cricket. So on this last trellis, we have another ground cherry plant that is unlike my other two. It has gotten really tall for some reason. It could be because it's under the trellis, not quite sure. But it's gone up more than it's gone out, which is okay in this situation. I'm not gonna tell it to do something else, but it's given us a lot of really nice ground cherries. And then the cover on this is actually the loofah gourd. And we haven't gotten any fruits from this yet, but it really does look lovely on the, on the trellis. So it's okay, but we would, we're hoping to get some, some fruit off of it before the end of the season. You wanna show them over here? All right, so that's the market garden and we are gonna head over to the kitchen garden. Okay, so this is the kitchen garden. I call it the kitchen garden just because it's right in front of the house. It has the easiest access. So this is where I plant a lot of the things that I use regularly in the kitchen. There's some tomatoes here. There's a lot of herbs here. I'm gonna have some onions and things here that I can grab quickly, that sort of thing. But here in the first bed, I wanted to have more flowers. So we have a mix of dahlias right here that have gotten a lot of bee action here recently make some really happy little bees. You probably got some on there right now. These have been one of my favorite things to grow. They are so gorgeous. I got lucky with mixing the colors though. I had no idea what colors they were gonna be. These tall plants here are our okra. This variety is a Burmese okra. Um, they're a really slender pod. The variety was specifically less slimy than other varieties, which was a selling point for us since we love okra, but I don't love how slimy they can get. So that it's been really good. It's been really great. And um, I'm not totally sure why this one is absolutely humongous compared to the other ones, but it could have just outgrown for light, but they've all produced pretty well. I have another holy basil plant here that is also really happy. I'm gonna be harvesting and drying a lot of this for winter time. This big one is pineapple sage and it just smells amazing. If there's another plant to have smell vision for, it's this one, it smells so delicious. But this is another one for tea and things like that. Smell that one? Mm. It's good, huh? We have some marigolds mixed in here, it helps with pest pressure. This one is a uh, sweet, just a regular Genovese basil that has gone to seed. It's gotten so hot that it just couldn't take it anymore. I was trying to pinch it off as much as I could. So in this next bed, we have more sweet basil that's gone to seed. 
but is making the bees very happy, so I don't mind. More okra. You can see the pressure that we got from Japanese beetles on a lot of these leaves, but again, that isn't something that really has, has affected the end result. There are some that are a little stunted, but they're still, they're still producing and will continue to produce in the heat. There's something that does okay in this weather. I have some garden sage here, really good for cooking and medicinal reasons that I'll be drying out as well. And this right now is one of my favorite medicine plants. It looks very similar to a lot of other things, but this is actually feverfew. When it goes to flower, it will look a lot like chamomile with little tiny uh, white petals and a yellow center. But this is a plant that is used for several different things, but mainly for migraine and headache relief. It's something that I am affected by kind of regularly, and all I have to do is come out here, grab a couple leaves and chew them up. I can't say they taste particularly good, <laughs> but they, they work, which is amazing. And it feels better to me than taking an over-the-counter drug. So let's go around this side. So on the back side of these trellises is actually all tomatoes. This is, you can tell, <laughs> these are the tomatoes I had the most access to. And that goes back to the permaculture aspect that I was talking about, just how we care for things that are more in our line of vision. I've heavily pruned these and made sure to harvest before rains and all of that stuff. And they are definitely the healthiest looking tomato plants, but they are still showing signs of getting ready to end the season. So I'm maintaining them as best I can and finishing out the fruits, but we're getting ready to swap over to fall. We're getting the signs of all that. You can see the leaves everywhere. My trees are letting me know. <laughs> so these are a striped Roman tomato variety. They've come really good. Then we have a garden peach. I would say it's probably been one of our more heavily producing plants this season. On this side, we actually had a Illini star, which is a like a red slicer tomato. It's been really good. So we did those tomatoes on the inside of this side, and I actually planted a few more on these corners here to let them meet kind of in the middle. They're doing that now, and I need <laughs> I need to trellis them down more to encourage them to go down because. The tomatoes are going to be too high for me to reach. <laughs> but we also have some more red dahlias mixed in and some more sweet basil that is also going to seed. And then on the back side of this bed, this we just recently turned over. We had, well not recently I guess, we had pak choy here that we actually finished off. And then we had a lot of spinach here that actually grew out and went to seed early in the summer. And a lot of seed just fell right back into the bed, which was okay. And it replanted itself. It is a little bit hot for that to be coming back right now. So some of it is withering out, but I'm not gonna stop it. I'll let it go as far as it can because we have room for it right now. So this wild space right here <laughs> is a little bit of a volunteer grape tomato plant that I didn't have the heart to take out. It came up right here at the beginning of the season. I did not know what type of tomato it was. I just knew it was a tomato because of the leaves. I left it, I fertilized it, and now we have this crazy jungle mess, but that's okay. We have a few pot containers here. We have um, lemon balm. We have a spider plant. This is one of my family spider plants. It's really special to me. This is skullcap, also for medicinal reasons. This is another container of sweet basil. I put this one in a container so I could attempt to bring it inside during the winter because I really missed my fresh basil during the winter. This one is German winter time. Then this huge expanse of leaves <laughs> actually starts right here. And early in the spring, we noticed just a little 
couple leaves come up and I have a really obsessive habit about checking all the plants in the yard with my plant checking app. And it was a melon and we let it grow out more and we figured out that it's a watermelon. So we're just letting it take up this entire space. It's been great for ground cover and it's kind of fun to have pop in there randomly. <laughs> then this is a more of a, an herb bed. I had onions here. I'll be doing a couple more little onions and things for easy access. This is chamomile. That looks particularly tragic right now, but it just finished reseeding itself, so it's there's it's gonna be everywhere. <laughs> so this one here is yarrow. The leaves remind me a lot of carrot tops, but they're just very fern-like and very soft. It's another really good medicinal plant. The leaves are dried and powdered to staunch bleeding. The flowers are used as antibiotic and anti-inflammatory and all those wonderful things. It's a really great plant that I can't wait to start using a little bit more and to have on hand. And this one is rosemary. It smells absolutely amazing. Mm, it smells so good. This ginormous plant was one of Zara's seed selections at the beginning of the year. It is a four o'clock of Peru. It's covered in really beautiful little pink flowers that open in the late afternoon when it finally starts to cool down around here. But it's beautiful and they love to collect the seeds. After the flowers die back, oh, where's one? There's just a really cute little seed left. And that's what you plant. So easy. It's a really easy plant for <laughs> seed collection. Not all of them are that easy. This is another one of our ground cherries, and this is actually my favorite one. It's really accessible, and a lot of times the fruits just drop down to the driveway, so they stay really dry and clean, so they're easy to collect. But under this plant, under this ground cherry, I've had a soapwort plant. This is another thing that people might consider to be a weed, but I think it's a very helpful plant to have around. It's going to be, we're going to use it to try to make some soaps. It's another thing that's new to us, but since we're geared so much towards self-sustainability, having options like this for making our own soap and having that local source is another method of us being able to take care of ourselves. So that's pretty cool. Oh, look how huge. This Oh, it's all, they're all over it. So this is a mammoth dill plant. It is not a whole lot to look at right now besides these beautiful flower heads that are going to seed, which I will collect all these seeds for more, for more planting. But it is covered in caterpillars right now. It's a host plant for these beautiful little caterpillars. And we don't take them off because we love, we love the butterflies. And they, they can have this plant right now, that's okay. I'm excited to see them on there. I'm excited, hopefully we get some cocoons and things. So let's go check out the full sun garden over there before I melt to death. Okay, <laughs> so this is our newest garden space. We are calling the full sun garden. If you come on in here, there. this is our first bed in here that is hot peppers. It's a mix of jalapenos right here in the middle and hot paper lantern habaneros um, are kind of mixed in here. Rocky is a huge hot sauce, anything spicy fan. So we grew a ton this year. We're going to be making our own hot sauce and barbecue sauce and a few other things. But this is really done really well now that it started heating up. They're just absolutely happy in this sun. The deer keep taking bites out of it, which is cracking me up because maybe they don't taste spicy. I don't know. Then in this next bed, this is another bed that looks pretty tragic right now. This needs to come out. It is done. This is where we had all of our striped Armenian cucumber melons that we really enjoyed. 
but it is time to do something else. I think we're gonna be doing sugar peas here, probably. It's another climbing variety, which will be really awesome for the space that we have between summer and winter. These are straw flowers that have not bloomed yet. They might be a little bit happier when it cools off as well, but those are a perennial flower that will keep coming back. In this third bed, we have more corn that needs to be taken out. It's, we've just decided we're giving corn a go next season, I think. <laughs> this was Silver Queen and it did pretty well. It got pretty tall and everything, but the pollination was just not very good. There was a lot of inconsistency in the kernel size and the overall pollination that it received. So next year we're gonna do a lot better coming in and hand pollinating and, and making sure that every stock gets properly pollinated. But we're not gonna be wasting what's in this bed. All of it will go to our pigs for a little snack, a little treat. In this bed here, I'm actually really happy with how these are turning out. When I plant okra, I planted two to a space initially, and one typically grows a little bit bigger and one of them starts kind of withering off. But I, I collected the second seed from a lot of those spots and moved them over here. And they've actually transferred really super well. We're just getting some harvest off of those and they look happy. So that's been awesome. A lot of these things that are getting taller, we are planning to plant underneath them to let things germinate kind of in the cool under, under their leaves. That'll give us a little more flexibility starting stuff as we go into the fall so things don't get scorched. So we actually have some more dahlias here. These are a little bit later planted, so they're just really coming into their prime right now, which is awesome because I think a lot of the other ones were starting to, they're starting to die back a little bit. And then we have a second round of Trombensino started. Those are gonna come all the way up this trellis. Hopefully I can get some room from these dahlias over here and just start training these up um, this trellis and hopefully we'll have a few more to put into storage over winter. That's the full sun garden. Let me show you one more thing over here. So another thing that we started doing just this year is collecting just some of our roof water. It's just connected to this one gutter off one section of our roof. And Rocky is constantly draining it out because it collects water so fast. But we would love to eventually start watering a lot of the garden with rainwater just because city water has been pretty aggressive on a lot of plants. It's pretty heavy in the chemicals and everything. So we've noticed a difference in using rainwater versus using hard city water. Before we applied it to the rest of our garden, since the tank was used for, it was a dye or something like that, we've run through a few cycles of cleaning it and we just wanted to test it on a few plants before we applied it to a lot of stuff. So these are, a few suckers that we rooted and we've been watering them with rain or with the collected water and they seem to be doing really well. They seem to be really happy. And at this point they look really happy, but we did let them get to a point before we started watering with this water that they were pretty heavily withered. I told Rocky I, I might need to root some more suckers for him to use because they looked they looked pretty tragic, but we put them in the soil and started watering with the collected rainwater and they have really taken off. They look really good. Everything's happy. They need a good prune, but there's no leaf curling. There's no leaf yellowing or browning or anything funky going on. So that's given us a good sign that it's gonna be okay to use our collected water on the rest of our garden. So that's really exciting. So that is the full garden tour. Thank you guys so much for checking it out today and hanging out with us. If we mentioned anything specific, 
or there's any links that we were sharing, those are gonna be below. So feel free to check those out as well as all of our social media for following us and seeing what else we have going on. We're really excited to share the transition of fall, the seeds that we have starting, and these pigs that we have coming here soon. That will be a really exciting development for the whole homestead. So continue to follow along with us. We're really excited that you do. And if you have been this far, we're really grateful for you. And thank you again for your time. And we're excited for you to tumble in next time. Bye guys.